Okay. So what kind of shape is this going to make when we rotate around the x-axis? No, I mean like the whole thing, the whole solid. A circle. Okay. So that's that's a circle is two dimensions. It's going to be in three dimensions. It's going to be a cone. Okay. So I'm going to take this shape. Imagine, imagine this shape uh, is uh, you know those decorations that that you uh, oh, have like paper. Oh, like spin around and then like move one way and it's small. <laughs> well, I don't think that's what I'm talking about. Do the three D thing. It helps out a lot. That takes a lot more uh, oh. than it looks like. I have to draw it ahead of time. And you didn't save them. What, just the one that you had before. Um, something that exists. I know. That probably help counting. There's a cone right there. <laughs> kind of positive. <laughs> So imagine that we're going to take this shape right here and rotate it in a circle around the x-axis. So this circle represents the path that that's going to follow. Okay. So let's take this. There she gets. Okay. So it's going to rotate around this circle. It's not like beautifully smooth, but it works. So it's rotating around, 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 all the way around to there. It's a Hershey kiss. It's like a Hershey kiss. Okay. So that's the idea here. We're going to take this shape and rotate it around the uh, around the x-axis. So um, imagine that, that that shape is like I gotta say those decorations that are made out of paper. Yeah. That come folded up and then you Just take bend them out into a circle yeah. and they're in the shapes of pumpkins or bells or things like that. Okay. So if you bought a decoration that looked like this and you rotated it around, you unfolded it all the way around a circle, you know, that'd be like a cone that's mm -hmm. sideways. Okay, so you rotate it around like that. Are you so good at John Keene? So we've got this, and I guess maybe I should top this line because it's in the back. So it looks like that. All right. And remember, we just want to look at a cross section. Find the surface area. It's perfect. I can understand. And then take the surface area and put it right in here. Times x. Dx. Not times x, of x, a of x. Area as a function of x. Okay, so how will we find the area of a well? What was a cross? What will a cross section look like? A circle, square, washer, a circle. Of course. So an area of a circle will be pi r squared. Yep. All right. R Here is. So now we r to the y is the r. The y value. Is simple. I right? a real simple problem here. The y value of the function is the r value. So equal to pi times negative x plus 1 squared. Right, because that's how we use x to find y. Uh, because you can see as we, as we go along here, we're going to want to put in an x value to figure out what the y value is. We can't just say y, because y varies as we move along the shape, as we look at different cross sections. Does that make sense? Yeah. OK. You got this? No problem? So far, good? OK. Um, Um, here is our formula for the for the area, and it's going to be from what to what? From zero to one. From zero to one is, is labeled in the picture. That's what makes this so easy in this problem. We're going to multiply this out. One of x, x squared minus two x plus one. Nice. And then we just take and the answer. Then we can put the pi oh, on the outside. Oh, excuse me, so sorry. This should be yeah. pi r squared. Yeah, OK. Out. So then it'll be 1 third x cubed minus x squared plus x. Great job, Luke. Good. Um, yeah. 0 to 1. Pi. Oh, I'm going to put ones in here. We got a 1 third. It's 1 minus. And then it'll be negative 1 plus 1, so it's just. One third. Third. Uh, we would put the we would put zeros in.
here, but we're just going to get a zero. So these cancel out. We got one third, so we got pi over three overall. Good one. Good. Just go. Questions? Good. Makes sense. Okay. Now six. Parabola, this parabola, 4 minus x squared over 4, that's what this is. And then y equals 2, that's this guy right here. And the area between is that. So we're going to rotate it around the x-axis again. All right. So now it's a little harder to imagine as like one of those decorations, because it's the, the axis of rotation isn't touching an edge of the shape. Okay. So take this shape, and in this shape, it's rotated around the x-axis. Donut. Okay, Maybe I like a bead. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. A bead with a, you could put a, a straight through. Okay, so this would go like this. This would be the back side. Yeah, why are you so good at drawing something? Practice. Okay. It's an olive. Or an olive, a pitted olive. Yeah, any any spherical shoal shape, sphere, sphere bush. <laughs> Spherical is shaped uh, that has a, a hole through it. Pitted olive, a bead, a uh, donut y kind of a guy. Okay? It's got a hole through the middle of it. So if we look at a cross section, like this one right here, what kind of a shape is this cross section? It's a big hole through the middle of it. It's a circle with a circle missing out of the middle. So we gave that the name washer. But all we have to do is is look at that washer and color it in so it's a little more visible. It is an olive. And we got that middle piece missing. My green olive is really gross. Okay. So we try to figure out what is the area of that cross section or any cross section. Like, given any x value. Well, remember how we talked about, oh, this isn't right at all. Hold on. Oh. I'm just going to erase this. Oh. Yeah. Erase the middle part a little bit more. There we go. So this is washer. Well, remember how we talked about the surface area of a circle with a circle missing? It would be the area of the biggest circle minus the area of the smaller circle. Right? Yeah. Paying attention. Okay, area of the larger circle, which is what four minus x over four squared, right? Well, let's see. Let, let's just write it real simply here. Oh. Pi of the bigger r squared. Pi r squared. That's the area of the bigger circle. Minus bigger circle. pi times the little r squared. Little r squared. That's the smaller circle. So we're going to take the bigger circle's area minus the smaller circle's area, and we have the area of this uh, this washer thing. Okay. Beautiful. So that would be pi times. Now, what's the larger radius? Isn't that 4 minus pi Yeah, this, this radius right here is the bigger radius. And so that, what did I do? That's not the same. Hold on. Right from here to there is the larger radius. And that's true no matter where I might have chosen to draw this cross section. From here to there, from here to there, from here to there, always a larger radius. And that radius is given by the y value, simply the y value of this function. So yes, 4 minus x squared, 4, 4 squared. So pi r squared minus, well, let's just uh, say again, we could factor out a pi. They both have a factor of pi. We get pi times big r squared minus little r squared. The little r is how big? 2. Just 2. That's the y value is always 2 squared for that whole thing. Always have this. Yeah, I did. I did the opposite. What do you mean? I, I little r by the minus big r. Yeah. Okay. You gotta be real careful of that. Uh, Caleb. Yeah, I love that guy. Yeah, I love 
the chat. Can't uh, win them all. All right, we're gonna go from A to B. What's our A to B on this one? Good. Isn't that three to three? Gotta, you know, let their manganese on us showing us exactly where these intersections are. Negative three to three. What if they didn't give us this picture and we weren't able to just look at it? Set them equal to each other. Set them equal to each other. Set this equal to that. And then you'll find those two points of intersection. Okay, and we got our area formula right here. We'll pull the constant multiple of pi outside, which we should be on ourselves. Um, and so we'll, we'll put this in there and we'll go ahead and just like uh, multiply these together. Yeah, 16. Um, minus 2x squared. Number 4, or you can put x squared for 2. What's that? X, yeah, my digits are Okay. Uh, and plus x to the 4th over 16. Minus 4. Did I get that right? X squared over four times four. Oh, okay, yeah. X squared over four times four. Yeah, I'm gonna think of those for this one. Um, and then negative X squared over four times negative X squared over four is positive X squared over sixteen. We have sixteen minus four, so we're not gonna do that. It's gonna be twelve. Six X one sixteen X four. So first, 12 times 3, 12, 36, 36. Uh, 27, right, 3 here, 3 to the third is 27, 27 divided by 3 is 9, 9 times 2 is 18, 3 to the fifth, 30, 81 times 3, I'm just going to put a negative 3 in here, so maybe the signs will be different for some of these, or maybe all of them. So we do f of b minus f of a, plug in negative 3 in here, so we do get negative 36. This will be a negative, so it'll just be the opposite of this. Be plus cancel each other out. 18. Uh, oh. No, they won't cancel each other out, they'll double each other, because we're subtracting the opposite. Oh, okay. And then uh, this is negative 3 to an odd power, so it will be the opposite of whatever we got here. So minus 243 over 80. Pi times, uh, let's see, you got 36 minus 18. Simplify it, uh, get a common denominator, add them together. <coughs> what kind of answer did they give? They gave us a decimal, right? Or in the books, answer. 
sir? 132.69. Let's find out. I know 40. Oh, I just said 36 minus 18 is 18. Oh. Okay. And negative 36 plus 18 is negative 18. Oh. The cell generated by the revolving the region bounded by the graphs of the equation about the line y equals 4. I don't see a part. Oh, sorry. 14, 14, I'm thinking about 14. 14? Do 16. I was thinking about how 14 had two parts and uh -huh. 16 was involved with that. Do, do 16. 16, not 14b. So the, the axis of rotation is y equals 4. Okay, so we're going to take some shape. We, want, we do want to get some kind of a visualization of the shape, but around this axis. You've got to get an idea of where these functions are and where they relate to the axis. Well, here's y equals 3, so there's that. Uh, x equals 0 is the y-axis. So we got this and this, and then any part of, of this function that's trapped uh, between those two, that's the region we're going to rotate. Looks like it's going to be below the axis of rotation rather than above. Okay, that's mm -hmm. important to note. Uh, 1 half x cubed, x cubed looks something like this. 1 half x cubed would be slightly less steep. We don't even have to draw a picture, just get a good visualization in your head. If you have your calculator, you can graph it on your calculator, it gives you a good idea. So we are going to need to find the volume of this guy right here. That's the only one that's trapped between all three of these. Rotate it around this axis of rotation. So it's going to rotate around here, like this. You're going to have a hollow part that goes through the middle. about a cross section. Think about a cross section. Make it in color, that's gonna help. What shape is this cross section going to have? It's gonna be a washer. Yeah, a washer of a circle with a circle missing out of the middle of it. tricky because it's not just the, the height of the y value, right? We gotta do a little bit of uh, you know, thinking, a little, a little bit more thinking. But still, we're gonna take the volume of the, the area of the bigger uh, circle minus the So area it's gonna be pi times one half x cubed. Um, let's, let's just figure out the well, radius and then multiply by pi and square. Oh, okay. So how tall is it from here to there? It's going to involve this function, right? Because that is this graph right here. Okay. Although, you know, maybe we don't want to look at that radius because that, that's not the original function. That was kind of silly. The original function that they gave us was.
this one right here. Here's the function, but here is the radius. bottom seems to make more sense because it actually involves the original function one half x cubed. Is that funny now? One half x cubed. So how are you going to find that larger radius, the distance from here to there? See how the larger radius is from the obviously from the axis of rotation. That's going to be the center, yeah. and down to here, right? Or if it's this cross section, it's going to be from here to there, right? But it's this little tiny piece right there that is where one half x cubed. Is. So what do we do? Is always four, right? Yeah. That's not the radius that we. That's not a no. radius of anything. That's not a radius. Where is y equal three? What? Where is y equal three? Right here. Then this right here is y equals one half x cubed. So you yeah. just subtract. Well, here's four, right? Right from here to there. That's always four. If I take four, four, and I subtract that much, then I've got this. If I go here, four minus this, which at that x value is still worth one half x cubed, right? You plug, plug x into there, and you'll find it this height. You take that away from four, and you have what's left over. Four minus one half x cubed. That's R. Is that like a general rule, or is it just a number? Like uh, it all graph? depends on the situation. So okay. that's why you really need to be able to get a visualization either by drawing, or graphing, or just in your head. Mm -hmm. Is there a lot of this on AP Calc? Like uh, no, not all visualizing lot. things. Visualizing things? Like visualizing things rotating around things. Uh, there might be a couple of questions. Do we have to square that, too? Well, yeah, we got the, the area is going to be equal to pi times r squared minus r squared. Big r squared minus little r squared, right? That comes from big circle minus one little circle. We factor out that pi. Area equals pi times, okay, r, the big r is that whole thing, 4 minus 1 half x squared. Cubed. And we square it. What about little r? How big is one. One, this right. little guy? It's, it's, one. One. Yeah, it's, uh, it's the difference between 4 and 3, so we call it just 1 all the way across. 1 squared. We'll just work this out, try to make this look, look a little bit simpler before we put it in our integral. Right here that equals pi.
is our formula for the area of any cross section. And if we take that area, we multiply it by a tiny width, we get the, the volume of a, of a thin, thin, thin washer. Okay, give it a little bit of thickness. Oh, it's still really dark. Okay, we get that little bit of thickness, and if we take a bunch of those and we add up all those volumes, we get the volume of the whole thing. Right? We take a tiny, tiny, thin, thin, thin washer here, and here, 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 everywhere. Just like we did with the area of a, of a region, right? The area under the curve. I'm really impressed, especially with that pen. Thank you. I don't know how much you think you're going to get. No, I'm complimenting me. No, I'm no, just actually impressed. I have no candy for you. It's just for No, we're just cards. impressed, that's all. Cash prizes or cards or. That's all, we're just impressed. Take the compliment! I don't like it. I don't like it. <laughs> Um, okay, so now we just need to decide what? The intervals. The intervals. From here to there, what is A and what is B? How do we figure that out? Set them equal to each other. Which ones? Y. This one? No. No. Y. The first Y. You know, from zero to infinity. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
interval. interval. Yes, the interval will change. The little radius. How big will the little radius be? Zero. It'll be zero. So there is no little radius, so we only have discs, not washers. Yeah, we don't have a washer. Okay. So we don't have this, right? Let's just cross out the things we don't have. That's not it. We don't need that. So it's just this. So it's not 15, it's 16. Right? Let's cross this out and this. So it's just that. So this, let's go back and write it. 16, that's 16x. <coughs> Uh, 16, and then our, our intersection will be different because this will be 4 instead of 3. So this will be 8, that's nicer because this, the third root of 8 is 2. two. Okay, that makes sense. Much nicer. They wouldn't, they wouldn't do that. Charlie's got to go, Stu. Stuart. Stu, Stu. ever come to class anymore? <laughs> I know, that's why class. Okay, bye. bye. What do you have to go to that's so important? Junior Two. What? Junior Times two. Don't talk to her. She's leaving. Macaroni pizza. Two <laughs> to the yes. four. Two to the seventh. Two to the seventh. One twenty-eight. Yeah. Nine is loads. Okay. I times sixteen times two. Thirty-two minus sixteen minus. What is this? So that's one twenty-eight. Twenty-eight over twenty-eight. Yeah. So if you want to, should we simplify? simplify? We'll simplify, right? Yeah. Because we're both divisible by four at least. Yeah. So one twenty divided by four. So that's thirty-two over seven, eight. No, seven. Seven. Thirty-two over seven. So we got sixteen. Sixteen minus thirty-two over seven. Right. Yeah. So we got the so 17, or 7 times 16. 16 which is times 7, which is 112. 73. Minus 12. 32 is 80. So 80 over 7. That's still wrong. Still wrong. Why? Ooh. Hang on, maybe I did something wrong. So I calculated it too. And you got 80 yeah. over 7? change a whole lot as long as you don't make a hiatus mistake. Ooh. Okay. Um, <coughs> so if there's pink slips for me to have, then just have them be over there. I'll collect those in a bit. Um, okay. And where do you say one piece? It's right there. So. It's right here? Yeah, I'll grab them a little bit. Well, we're not going to So if I rotate this around the x-axis, what kind of shape is that going to make? Yeah, there's not going to be any washer in there. It's just going to be like a disc. Because it, it, it touches the axis of rotation all the way across. Yes, yes. we like that. And yeah, we do like that. That's very nice. It makes things easier. So let's shrink this, make this make a oh, Whoa. <laughs> whole thing, make some room. Uh, we're going to rotate it around the x-axis. This dome 
You look like a cat. In a cross section. Actually, I mean, a, a half a sphere, right? A yeah. hemisphere. Uh, so, that, what's the area <laughs> of a cross section going to be? It's just going to be pi r squared, right? Yes. is the radius defined as? It is y. y. It is y. It is the square root of 16 minus x squared. Square root of 16 minus x squared. Squared. That's nice when the square roots because this ledge can be drawn out. Area equals pi times 16 minus x squared. Other, what's the other function? I don't know. It's this one, oh, right where it touches the x-axis. The x-axis is y equals zero. zero. Y equals zero is this line right here. So we set this equal to zero. No, we set uh, this equal to zero. And what will we find? Four. 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 Um, zero to four of sixteen minus x squared dx. 16x minus 1 third x third, 0 to 4. Uh, don't need to plug in 0, so just plug in 16 times 4. Which is? Oh no. So, uh, okay. 64. 16 times 4 is 64. 4 minus uh, 4 to the third. get an idea of what does this function, what, what does this region look like? Where is it? Is it above the axis of rotation? Is it below? Let's figure that out. So graph them. Let's graph them. Y equals x squared minus 5x plus 7. What kind of a thing is that look like? Parabola. A parabola? Or if it's up or down? No. Up. Up. Okay. Uh, let's just draw a parabola. What about this guy? It is a parabola. That opens down. down. Okay, so maybe it looks like that. Yes. Now, if there's a region trap between them, you know that the, the one that faces down has to, you know, come up and, and be above the one that opens up. Yes. Right? Otherwise, if it's down here, there is no region. So it's got to cross it somewhere. And even if these parabolas are over there, you know, somewhere other than what we're looking at, uh, it, it's not too important right now. Um, but we should kind of get an idea of where they are now, which we could definitely do now that we can kind of see a picture of it. Like how, what will give us an idea of where these parabolas are? Uh, the rest of the function. The rest of the function? What do you mean? The x squared part of this parabola. Yes. Oh, well, yeah, we, yeah, we could do that. But you know what, a real, maybe this is uh, too clever, maybe, but what if we found these two intersection points? Oh. Then we'd have an idea of where this stuff was. Yeah. Okay? That was clever. So let's do that. How do we do that? They can equal each other. Equal each other. x squared minus 5x plus 7 equals negative x squared plus 3x plus 1. So we get it all equal to 0, so we get 2x squared minus 8x plus 6. Factor two out of all that. Two. Then we try to factor these two out. Of, is that factor? Um, yeah, I wrote it that way. Yeah. 
x minus 1, x minus 3. x minus 1, x minus 3. So x equals 1 and x equals 3. So that's 1. That's 3. My drawing was, was all right. Oh. Um, now, we should get an idea of what the relationship is with the parabolas to the axis of rotation, y equals 5. How can we do that? How can we figure out? Is the axis above it? Is, the ax is this axis y equals 5, is it above it? Is it through it? Is it below it somehow? Like, did I just draw these parabolas too low? Can get an idea of that? Definitely above it? Yes. Why is that? So if you plug in numbers, they're below. Which numbers? Five, one and three. Plug in the numbers one and three? And you did that real quick? Yes. If you plug in one here? Yes. Okay. One minus five plus seven. So negative four plus seven is three. Oh, are we saying? Trying to figure out if this is above okay. this shape, this okay. is the shape we're going to rotate. Is it yeah, above so here? Does it go through it? Below. It doesn't go through it? Could it go through like right up at the very top? I don't know. Um, a graph that like calculated? Uh -huh. Like it's above. It's above. Okay. So let's, let's think. Maybe we have our done. So the axis of rotation is above. We're going to rotate it around that. Okay, so there's like that middle part. Washer shape, so we're going to find the area of a washer, which is pi times little pi times big R squared minus little R squared. And of course, the radius will start at the, the middle. The big radius will be this guy right here. So we're looking at this cross section, big R, and little R will be. How big big R is. Um subtractive. Five minus five minus um the x squared. So we're going to say like plus seven. This one? Yeah, because this is the this is the lower one. Radius so five, like five minus this piece that's given by x squared minus five x plus seven. So five minus x squared minus five x plus seven. And little r. So it is going to be five minus negative x squared plus three x plus one. Good. 
We can multiply this all out and multiply this all out and combine like terms and we'll, we know what we're doing. we'll done a, a challenging algebra two exercise. And um, it goes from one to three. Let's just talk about this. One to three, because we already found the intersection points for one to three. Huh? And then we can put the pi on the outside. Pi on the outside. And then we got all of this. to today's business, yeah. which uh, I hope to get to something called the shell method, some other way to find volume. It's like cool. the last new thing oh. that we'll learn. Is it cool? It's cool. Cool. So, so far we've got the disk method and the washer method for rotated solids. So what the disk, disk is the, where there's a whole circle. And there's nothing missing. So we had one a second ago. That guy was a disc. That's when the shape, the region that you're rotating is touching the axis of rotation. Then we got the washer. That would be when you're missing something in the middle. All right. And then we're going to do the shell method. But before that, before that, um, let me ask. We're going to we're going to rotate things around vertical axis. And actually, even before that, I wanted to see if we can do this real quick. Okay. So this is in a rotated uh, solid. It's back to cross sections that are some other shape. Okay. So again, it's, it's important to get a picture of what this looks like. So I want you to take a moment and uh, look that over. Let's have that. Right, so this is a graph of y equals the square root of x minus 1. And where is, uh, let's see, it's trapped, this region is between the, this graph, the x-axis, and x equals 5. What does x equals 5 look like? Vertical line. Vertical line at 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's this area right in here. And it's cross sections that are perpendicular to the x-axis, perpendicular to the x-axis, are semicircles. What does that mean? What? What does that mean? Cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis are semicircles. It means in the graph, the graph, the x-axis mm -hmm. can't be like a circle. Right, so let's try to visualize that if more possible. So if we look at a cross section of this shape right here, it would be a semicircle. Okay. And here's the, the rest of the shape, bigger semicircle here in the back, tiny semicircle there coming to a point there. Does that make sense? picture of this solid. Okay. Does that make sense? Um. So there's a semicircle. How are we going to find the area of that semicircle?
find that area of the cross section and then put it in. So it's just. What did we do with the square root of, or the. Well, in general, how would we find the area of any cross section? What would be the equation? One half pi r squared. One half pi r squared. And so all we need to know is figure out it, it, how big is this radius? The square root of x minus 1. The square root of x minus 1? Is the radius? Uh, that's the diameter. That would be the diameter of the circle oh. from here all the way to there. So not, okay. not just that. So if that's the diameter, how do we find the radius? Divide that by 2. Divide that by 2. So the radius. Pi over 8, constant multiple outside, get the x minus 1. Yeah, so we just need to know the limits. 1 to 5. Good. 1 to 5. Put it 1 half x squared minus x. Minus one would be negative one half. Negative one half minus negative one half plus, plus, plus one half. Yeah. <coughs> equals this is sixteen. So sixteen over two. So sixteen pi over over sixteen over. So here's what we're going to get into. We've got to add into our, our list of skills. We've done this a little bit. We've got to rotate things around vertical uh, axis of rotation. Uh, so let's start with this one. This is off the AP test as well. We rotate it around the Y axis. Is this on the shell one or no? Not yet. Okay. Not yet. So we're going to take this guy here. We're going to rotate it around the X axis uh, between negative 1 and Let's take a look at this graph real quick. X squared, or x sorry, cubed, looks like that. Between negative 1 and 1, so here's negative 1 and here's 1. We're going to rotate it around the y axis like this. Between, so we're going to take this shape and this and rotate it around the y axis. So the first thing to make this easy. Say about this shape and this shape? It's going to look like an hourglass? It'll look like. Uh, it'll, it'll look like an hourglass if it flipped over the x axis, though, wouldn't it? It would look a little bit more like like uh, two funnels stuck together if we rotate around the x axis. Oh. And if we rotate around the y axis, it, it would 
will look kind of like a, uh, an hourglass, except for the the empty space is what it'll look like the hourglass. Oh, not the I actual see. solid. Yeah. Okay. Which means, you, like, if you cut a little hole right there, you would be able to use the ship as an hourglass because it has a place to hold in the sand, right? You're gonna get a little jarring. Uh, but what, let's talk about these shapes. They're the same. There's a, a certain kind of symmetry called symmetry about the origin, meaning if I take this shape of this graph and rotate it around like that 180 degrees, it will be the exact answer. So, could we just maybe find the, the volume of this solid? That one? And double it. Yeah. Okay, that's the kind of cleverness that I want you to use. Okay, we're just going to worry about this. Shape rotated around, so obviously they're going to get like this. Oh, it is. <laughs> but the actual shapes will be these ones. Is that the bottom half too? Uh-huh. <laughs> but the, the idea is the same. We're still going to find the area, the area of the cross section, and then take the interval, except for this. What's different about this than previous examples that we've been doing around, y -axis. around the y-axis? So, like, what is our equation going to look like for finding the surface area? It's going to have a y value because it's the y value that's changing that, that tells us how big, uh, you know, each of these things is. Here's another cross section right here with a smaller bit missing out of the middle. So let's concentrate on this guy right here. Let's find the area of that cross section. Maybe yes. We want to deal over here because this is our original function. So here's our bigger radius. This is a washer, right? It's like the big area minus the small area. Yeah. So how big is that big radius? One. One? Sure? Yeah, it's one. This side is at one. Good job. So the big radius is one. Okay, how about this smaller radius? is in, is horizontal value and x value. How do we figure out what that x value is? Well, if we know what y value we are at, then we can figure out what the x value is. We solve for x. We get x to equal the cubed root of y. Okay. So if we go up to this y value and you take the cubed root, you're going to figure out what x value you're at. Because if you take, go to this x value and cube it, you get the y value. So if you start with the y value and take the cubed root, you get the x value. Does that make sense? Okay. We turn it from in terms of x and in terms of y. So r is equal to the cubed root of y. So we're going to take the integral from. Do we just do that? We use so we can do one side, right? Yeah, we can just do the volume. But we're just doing the volume of this guy. Like if we did the volume of this one. It would just be this, up and down, exactly the same. So what is so we made it one to one though? Or we do zero to one. Well, it's on the y-axis oh, instead of yeah. the x-axis. X -axis. So we're gonna start yeah, no. at zero. Zero. And up to what? Um. So we know the x value is one. The x value is one, so the y value will be one, one cubed is one. So we're still from zero to one. We're gonna double this, right? Yeah. Because we're oh, taking the volume yeah. of this, we're doubling it. Okay. So the the area will be <laughs> pi times big R squared minus little r squared. Little r is the cube root of y squared. Okay. So we'll take the pi. 
y out as well. We've got 1 minus y to the 2 thirds. So the purpose uh, of the shell method is, that we have not learned yet, but the purpose of the shell method is uh, it's just another way to find the volume of a solid that may be a little easier than having to solve for x and make everything in terms of y. But first, let's, let's, like before we actually do the shell method, I want you to, to be able to decide Would it be easier, think of the question this way, would it be easier for you uh, to find the volume of this shape, these two red things, rotated around the x-axis or the y-axis? Basically think, is it easier to figure out the area of a, like a horizontal cross-section or a vertical cross-section? Let me, let me just show you some, what would be easier? I feel like I want to say x because we've done it more, but we should say y because we still do this last. Yeah. So let's, let's look. So if you rotate <laughs> the shape around the x-axis, well, no. Yeah. I'll show you, I'll try to make it more obvious why it would be easier to do the y-axis. It is the y. We just think x is easier because we've done more. There are some cases, this one I would say they're equally as easy as each other. Okay, I have, yeah. Mar <laughs> okay, so would you, would you rather try and find the cross section of this vertical washer or this horizontal washer? The horizontal, but we don't want to. I would, I would say the vertical would be easier. Let's look at the cross section. So rotate it around the x-axis. Let's see, we'll get this little guy here, and this one here. Now it's kind of a shape like this, and this. Okay, in this cross section, if you've been uh, following along with, you just gotta find this bigger radius, and that, that radius would be fairly simple to find, right? It would just be the y value of this and parabola. on the last one, wouldn't it be zero on the x-axis too, because there is no washer, it's just a disk. That would make it a little bit easier. Let me show you some that would, why it would be easier to do around the, the, the vertical axis. Okay, so this, this one's pretty standard. This is one that we've kind of done already. Let's take a look at this one. This would be easier around x-axis. Why? Why? Because it's not like up and down. Also, there's multiple outputs. I mean, because one yeah, for the for, for this way, there's like multiple outputs like that. That would yeah. be hard to figure out. So yeah. definitely, it's not even a function in terms of x. It's not a function in terms of y only. So you definitely want to go this way. Like you want to find the areas of horizontal cross sections. Okay. It would be easier to go around this way. It'd be easier to find the cross sec the area of this cross section than of this one. And not 
that a problem is going to tell you, uh, you choose, rotate around the x-axis or the y-axis if you don't care. It's going to tell you where to rotate it. But you're going to choose between the disk method, the method of the shell method. And it comes down to, is it easier to define my shapes vertically, like this, with these, basically like these little shapes here? Because if you think about it, to make these washers, we would be taking a vertical rectangular shape, a really thin rectangular shape, and rotate it around the x-axis. But that's difficult. It's difficult to, to define the height of that rectangle. But it would be much easier to define this rectangle if it's laid flat like that. Because we would just take this value minus that value, right? Yeah. That minus that. It would be much simpler to do. Okay, let's look at another one. Flip this. Would you rotate it this way or this way? Or would you, the better question is, would you rather find the height of that thing? Back I'd rather, much rather find this shape. Okay. How about this one? Why? I'll even move this axis down so it doesn't make it too far off. Why? Around the y-axis? Why is that? this shape. When I come over here, like th this is fine. The, the, we just have to find the radius, but the radius here is the height of the line. What about the radius over here? Well, that's the height of the parabola. So I have to like find this place, switch from this function to this function to find the radius. I basically have to find the volume of this shape and add it to the volume of this shape. I have to do two integrals. So why? We do it this way, the, we'll have a washer. There are two tops on that one. Right? But this function will always define the larger radius, and this function will always define the smaller radius. So there's no switching off. So if we solve everything for x and, and do it that way, that would be a lot easier. Okay? How about this one? Be easier to find uh, this shape, like this, the height of this shape all the way across, or of this one all the way. Why? Yes, like Except it's right next to the it's right next to the y-axis. That would be y. Like the same thing. Thing. It's on the y-axis. Well, we don't. We don't have anything like this. Either, <laughs> right? Where it breaks up into two areas. We have to define separately and find two different volumes and add them together and all that kind of stuff, right? So for this one, really, either one. It'd be easy yeah. to figure out any of these shapes or these ones. Because if we look at it this way, this function is always bigger than this one. If we look at it this way, this function is always still to the right and greater than this function. So either way.
um, let me just redraw this and talk about the shell net. So this is, this is always a difficult thing to teach. I'm not so much trying to get you to think about would it be easier to rotate on the x-axis or the y-axis, but right now all you have, the only tools that you have, are uh, disks and washers, or else squares and semicircles, that kind of stuff. But if we're going to rotate solids, uh, you only have disks and washers. Okay. Um, but if I ask you to um, take this shape, um, this shape. Let's say I ask you to take this shape. And it wouldn't be too bad. So the shell method is, is just another way of finding the, the, the volumes of rotated solids um, that's easier than the disk or the washer. Uh, here's why. Because if I asked you to rotate this around the y-axis, rotate this around the y-axis, if we do it the same way as, as this other guy. Torn Peter all over Brand Bell's room. No. Oh. Class and just out of nowhere, just projectile vomited everywhere. Uh, oh. He didn't hit anyone, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> so, Franzel's whole class is just in the hallway, like, Dennis is cleaning up. <laughs> Alright, so if we were to take oh. this function, so we rotate around a vertical axis. You saw how we just solve everything for x and put everything in terms of y, like make everything a function of y, um, which isn't terrible. But if we look at this function, look at what happens when we try to solve everything for uh, x and put everything in terms of y. There's this, this thing right here where it, it switches from this washer, this larger radius would be defined by this function. Are we talking about this or? No, sorry. Cute. Let's think about this. This is what I'm talking about. The larger radius would be defined by this line down here. But up here, the larger radius would be defined by this parabola. So but not only that, I mean, we'd have to figure out that it would be just kind of a mess. Yeah, so it would be like two different like, sizes. Yeah. Kind of. okay. Do you want to think we, or I guess you don't get to choose. Would you? you don't get to choose which axis you rotate it around, but you do get to choose do I use a disk, washer, yeah. oh, okay. uh, or I could use this shell method. Okay. So when you play those all out in your mind, you want to figure out which one is easier considering the two functions. Yeah. Okay. Is it easier to figure out, uh, like, basically any rectangular shape horizontally like this, or vertically like this? Well, to find the, the, the height of this rectangle, you just take the parabola minus the line, right? Parabola minus line, parabola minus line all the way across, it's just like that. If we do it horizontally, it's easy enough here, but then it switches. And this line no longer defines the bigger radius. This parabola defines both radius, which is not impossible to do. We can find both of these values and take this larger radius and find its area and this All right. Well, that doesn't sound too fun. So let's talk about this shell net. So if I wanted to rotate this, around the y-axis, okay. 
and I use this kind of a shape, okay, rather than rotating this horizontal thing like this and making a washer, <coughs> if I take this kind of a shape and I rotate it around the y-axis, shape would that be? Cylinder. A cylinder with a big hole in the middle of it. It's just going to be like a thick as the thickness of that piece of cheese, right? Yeah, very, very, very thin, right? So that's why it's called the shell method. It's like the shell of, um, of a cylinder, okay? So it's like, it's like you had a cylinder and you painted it with this very, you know, thin coat of paint and this shape is just like the thickness of a coat of paint. You know, um, so yeah, we're going to do jury. So we're going to talk more about this, but I want you to think: um, How would you find the volume of this shell? Okay, uh, Mr. Stewart, yep. are you?